literally, in a land of likes, leggings, and lattes, comes a podcast hosted by two basic beings, Becca and Maddie. This is The Basic Bee Podcast. Welcome back, bees. If you are watching on the YouTubes, you'll see that we have a special guest. Special guest. State your name for the people. Lindsay. (laughs) She's one of my very good friends. And of course, Maddie is here. Hello. She was just drinking water and I interrupted her. That's okay. (laughs) So, um, Lindsay and I worked, just as a quick intro, Lindsay and I well, I'm, I was friends with your mom first. Yes. So me and Lindsay's mom worked together at the daycare. She, Her mother actually trained me. Me and her mom became really good friends. When I worked at the dealership, there were... Maddie's eating a candy if you can't hear. <laughs> I'm trying to be discreet, but like right? I need it really bad. I'm you sorry. Okay. Eat the chocolate. It's okay. We're bees here. Um, And so there was a job open, and I offered it to your mother... And your mom was like, no, I'm good where I'm at. But she was not good where she was She at. was not. But Lindsay was interested. So Lindsay came. And I think you interviewed that day. Like, didn't you? I know I interviewed and Quick. got the job the exact same day. Yeah, I think. We didn't even interview. She just, we just talked and that, I think that like, was it. Yeah, I think your mom um was like, I'll text Lindsay. And you were able to get there like right after you got done it your job and then yeah she interviewed got the job in the same day which never really happened there so they must have really liked you that good you were that (laughs) good and then yeah since we worked together we became just really good bfs Mm -hmm. we love the same things so we just get along really well our husbands are both mechanics so they get along really well it's a great great friendship it's a good dynamic yes so one question we ask all of our guests, Lindsay, is what's the most basic thing about you? Oh, my gosh. I mean, there's a lot. I, there really is. <laughs> I try to be basic all the time, and I call myself a basic bee, but my husband will not allow me to call myself that. He's like, you're not one. And I'm like, but I am. He just wants <laughs> to think that you're the, the queen it's, bee. It's not a bad thing. I, am. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, basic. um, I mean, Starbucks. <laughs> the Starbucks. Anxiety. <laughs> dogs. There Anxiety is a big one. Yeah, for sure. And then um, since you said you like Starbucks, what is your Starbucks order? Um, When I was doing keto, it was a very, very excessive and lengthy order, but I stopped and I don't care anymore. So it's back to uh, refreshers. <laughs> I like those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you, um, you also introduced me to their caramel apple spice yeah that they don't have anymore yeah i know i can't get it anywhere it's it's sold out everywhere Mm -hmm. well obviously there's a lot of special things about Lindsay, but Mm -hmm. she is here on a mission she is here on a mission yes and that mission is twilight yeah it's the best best. so we're not going to just talk about twilight for people that are getting ready to turn it off because we said twilight (laughs) We so what <laughs> our focus on is of course Twilight inner with the vampire diaries, but if you remember, place yourself like what 15 years ago. Vampires, vampire diaries, a lot of these series came out at the same time. So it made us wonder why? Why was a, the vampire craze You know, it was like we were in the 1700s again and vampires were a big deal. Because, you know, through the years, you've had a Dracula movie, stuff like that. But it's not very, it just wasn't very big. So it's like this vampire craze took place. and We are curious why. Young vampires, specifically. Yes, specifically young teenage. Yes, young, hot teenage vampires. (laughs) And I mean, not old crusty Dracula. What what happened? <laughs> okay, no, all, they're not old crusty Dracula, but the early '90s movie that had Keanu Reeves in it. Like <laughs> he looked good there. Have you not seen? That I've one? never even I heard of seen it. That. Uh, it's got Which Winona just proves Ryder the point. Twilight so was just such a. Big it was life changing. Hmm. I, no, I Twilight to was life changing. Twilight was life changing. So, 
real quick. So before I get into my facts of why America was overtaken with this vampire craze, what drew you to Twilight? Um, Nothing at first. You didn't want to read it at first. No, I did not. My best friend at the time, it was her favorite book and she would not stop pushing it on me. She's like, you got to read it. You need to read this. It's so good. I'm like, no, I'm great. Thank mm-hmm. you. Like, cause the way they were like, you know, the cover and everything, they have all like the synopsis. What? There was no synopsis. <laughs> you were just like, mm, no. yeah, all it had was like, like that, that main line of there mm-hmm. was three things I was certain of and. There She's, was no synopsis of Twilight on the book? In the original one, no. I, I'm the only one here that didn't read it. So mm-hmm. that's interesting. I didn't realize that. Yeah. It, later when they like started re like distributing it and like years and they have to republish it, they started putting synopsis on it. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's why I refused to read it because I knew nothing about it except for he was a vampire and she was in love with him. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm good. Boring. Thanks. Yeah. I was not big into vampires mm-hmm. or any of that. Were you into love stories? I was into the basic love stories, like okay. Sarah Dessen love stories. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so finally I just to shut her up, I read it. <laughs> and and how it was old downhill ever since. It was downhill. You were in love with it. How um how old were you when you read it? <laughs> Twelve, maybe. Twelve? Twelve? Wow. Young wow. Teen, for sure. So when you read Twilight, was New Moon out? I believe so. Okay. Yes. So just for people that don't know anything about Twilight, there are a total of four books. I'm not counting. They had like this weird. The Life and Times of Brie Tanner. Yeah. yeah don't we don't count that. that. And there... then Life and Death where it was like a switched sexes type. Yeah. So don't worry about that. So yeah, there's a total of four books. It turned into five movies. Mm-hmm. And the reason, no, another reason. five movie, five books now. Oh yeah. Because of Midnight Sun. Midnight Sun. <laughs> but does it really count? Twilight is from Bella's perspective. Midnight Sun is from Edward's. It don't count. <laughs> very moody. But um, they and they have five movies. And Maddie, you've at least seen the movies, right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of the movies. I was a late um, bloomer when it came to my Twilight obsession. So did you recently kind of become obsessed when they came on Netflix? Well, it was actually last year during the height of the pandemic when I was like, I really want to watch it again because I did go see the movies when they would come out with my mom Mm -hmm. and we enjoyed them, but I wasn't obsessed. Yeah. But I liked them. And then when I got older, like 22, 23, I was like, I really have a hankering to watch Edward right now. Mm -hmm. And then I fell in love with Edward and yeah, I just love the movies, but I'm not a like a fan in the sense that I've read it all. Mm -hmm. So... Um, with the movies, what do you think, since this is kind of a newer thing for you two years ago, what drew you to the movies then? Was it just like the romance of it all? It was like the nostalgia of going back to like, what era? 2012 ish. Mm -hmm. It was just, I feel like life was so simple back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone was obsessed with Twilight. Everyone was wearing the buckle, Hollister. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just love that. Yeah, and um, everyone was doing the Sharpie tattoos. That was a huge thing when I was in middle school. Wait, what's that? Yeah, I didn't do. You Sharpie didn't tattoos. do Sharpie tattoos. <laughs> no. I felt like that was a bit, maybe that was just at my school. Maybe it's just you. <laughs> no, if you were in a friend group, you all got every day. You draw like a matching tattoo with a no. Sharpie. I think okay. that was you. <laughs> that was just me. It's just you. I was a winner in high school, guys. Okay. I can attest. <laughs> well, I had, um, yeah, I feel like in tw- in high school it was Twilight, Justin Bieber. Um, yeah. Pitbull? Me. Not Pitbull. <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. Kesha. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't a huge fan of Kesha. I loved Kesha. But you were, you guys were a couple years older than me mm-hmm. when Twilight hit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think we, we definitely hit it at our prime time. You were like probably more horny than I was. Yeah. that I was definitely. For Edward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> horny for Edward. Because I was still Maybe. like prepubescent. Yeah. And now all the girls are horny for Charlie, the dad. Oh, uh, that is Char- so wrong. No, it's not. He's a <gasps> dill. Look at her sweatshirt. Do you not see this? Oh, wait. He's right here. 
I love that. Yes. I just, I actually just read it and realized that was Charlie. It's Charlie. So how I from didn't realize. Breaking Dawn. And he tells Jacob, put your clothes back on. I freaking love that. Isn't that so cute? Yes, it is my favorite. And I have a baby blue one and I got stuff on it. And I was so devastated, almost in tears, that I messaged so the you, woman was like, can I have another one? So you're Charlie Stan. Now, yeah. What do you love about him? He's not even a vampire. I mean, he doesn't have to be. She said he's a DILF. He's a DILF. All he's, it takes is DILF status. He, mm-hmm. Okay. He is a great father because her mom is crap. Um, <laughs> he's attractive. He's a he a, has he's a, a good he's got a it all thick mm-hmm. stash mm-hmm. it's a stash <laughs> it's hot <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness well real quick i just want to talk about um why we think twilight you know was you know popular so um part of it has to do with the recession actually Oh, so rem- if you guys remember, it was like 2006, 2007. No, it was a little bit later than that. Maybe 2008 when the recession hit. And I think that that sparked, if you guys remember, zombies and vampires became a thing. Yes. Kind of around that time. And a lot of it was the fantasy of it. Um. Lindsay and I were talking about it earlier and she made the great point that yeah these vampires they were young and rich that's what everyone wants right is to stay young and be rich and have the money especially when you're dealing with a recession but another reason was people were just trying to find a way to escape their reality Um, and mind you our recession was not as bad as the Great Depression or anything but a lot of people were struggling and it was way it was an outlet and mind you cell phones were not a huge thing so vampires and zombies were so that was a large part of it <clears throat> what year did twilight come out do you remember i had to be book or movie we can ask siri hey siri when did twilight come out which one 2008 yeah, was when the first movie was. I yeah, thought it I was, was later. About to say that. <gasps> yeah. That's crazy. I was like ten. Yeah. So, and if you guys remember, like it was not popular when the first movie came out. Mm-mm. It didn't really get popular till after the first movie was already out of the theaters. It was so cheesy. Did, yeah. Oh. Did you go see it in theaters or? I did. Yes. Was it had that blue overcast? It was. It was amazing. <laughs> it was. The- beautiful (laughs) um so yeah so that was a big part of it um so here's a couple other reasons for it people are fascinated by the idea of them being something other than other than what they generally appear to be so vampires look like humans so that was part of it like anybody could be a vampire i guess um they don't have a problem with social dif- disapproval. They are looked as <laughs> they are looked at as teenagers. They are looked up to by teenagers as role models. Vampires. I never thought they were role, mo- mo- role models. I didn't either. But this is according to my article. Killing people. Yeah. Mm, okay, I see it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vampires are shown as hard to get um, when they're with women and embody chivalry and old world idea now i do agree with this because if people remember in both twilight and the vampire diaries which both came out around that same time there was both were very old-fashioned and you know were chivalrous to their ladies if you guys remember edward would not do bella she wanted it she begged for it and he was like nah thirsty she was uh, super thirsty and he was like like, "Mm, i'm gonna pass (laughs) and he made her wait till marriage and i think as a young woman that was it was nice because guys in high school were not like these vampires that were from the 18th century that is kind of cool to think Mm -hmm. that um a vampire was he had lived through all of these different eras Mm -hmm. and he knew all of this stuff. I mean, he's essentially the ultimate sugar daddy. If you think about it, he I mean, be all if vampires, he's that old. <laughs> yeah, you, Lindsay made a great point. She's like, 
if you're a vampire and you've lived 400 years and you're poor, you're not doing it right. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> There's no way. No. You'd have to try to be poor mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, there was just a lot of things that I guess caused people to really like vampires. Another one was that vampires need humans to survive. For, to survive. So it's kind of like this weird... I think this is where the sexual fantasy, which I will talk about, comes into this, is the idea that vampires need human blood to live in a lot of case scenarios. So, yeah, there was that. And then that vampires are both a hero and a villain. So that inner tor turmoil where you're a bad boy, you're a bad boy, but you also make your you girl keep heart. her virginity. There's nothing better. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then Great. Um, the last reason is literally I'm just going to read it out. Vampires are sexy as hell. <laughs> Some. I Depends. Mean, <laughs> yeah. We're going to we will talk about the sexiness of the other um, people. Um, but real quick, I just want to go through the Twilight revenue. So worldwide, Twilight made um, five hundred million dollars, a little over that. Um, more closer to six million or six hundred million. I'm way off. New Moon, um, was right at one thousand million dollars. Is that how you say that? A trillion? Is it? Is it just a where, number? Where are you at? It's see, that's a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we like vampires. They're smarter. It appeals this is to why the, they have all the money. <laughs> it's like it doesn't. It's, let me see it. It's a thousand. <laughs> Which one? New moon. You got to combine okay. both. You got to go to the line. It's like a thousand. Oh, you have to multiply it. Yeah, we're not doing all that. No, that's that's really difficult. Wouldn't that be? I don't know. <laughs> Love our math. So we're not good at the math, but Eclipse and uh, Breaking Dawn were right at that number too. And then <laughs> thousand million dollars. <laughs> Breaking Dawn Part Two was over that. <laughs> they were at two thousand million dollars. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh! Obviously. <laughs> and then, um, if you guys remember, Vampire Diaries began in two thousand six. Oh, and, really? Yeah. The series. That's what this says. The pilot episode attracted the largest audience for the CW of any series premiere since the network be oh wait the network began in 2006 I can't, I'm not with it today <laughs> oh hon I was gonna say when did the book come out <laughs> no it came out in September 10th 2009 I was like it was so close to Twilight that does not seem right I was gonna say I thought I thought they were after mm -hmm. Twilight they were when so. did the book come out though because it was a book first so the book it doesn't say, but I know that um, isn't Twilight based off Vampire Diaries? There were similarities because the author tried to sue Stephanie Meyer, right? I felt like I that was a thing. Know. So, yeah, uh, just both both made a lot of money. So at least a thousand million. <laughs> at least a thousand, <laughs> thousand million. million. And a lot, another vampire <laughs> show that came out then that nobody ever remembers. True Blood. Oh, I've heard, I've of, heard of it. It was my favorite show. And it came out around the same time? Yes. Early to mid-2000s. I read all the books. I I have a tattoo. I We're not going to talk about. <gasps> you have a tattoo of Where True Blood. It? From True Blood. It's on my hip. You can't say, I have a tattoo of True Blood, and we're not going <laughs> to talk, talk about it. We have to We have to talk about it. We're not going to see it. It, it. If it's on your hip, we don't have to see it. But is it a quote? Is it... Okay. Is it so, a bite? Did you get a bite like this? <gasps> oh no! <laughs> it's a bite. It was my very first tattoo when I turned eighteen, <laughs> and my boyfriend at the time paid for it. Which BT Dubs, he did not. His mama had to come and pay for it because he was a liar and broke. Oh my! And so it was my favorite show. There was a bar in it called Fangtasia. So oh, it says no. in like neon bright colors it says fantasia and it's two bite marks but the tattoo artist was god awful <laughs> they're not bite marks they are bullet holes oh, no <laughs> they're bullet holes 
Uh, on your hip. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that tattoo is what won me six free tattoo removals. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, you got it removed. Half of it. It was way too painful. Could not continue. Oh my gosh. Your skin you, blisters up. Do you it's have pictures of this? Somewhere in the world. I need you to find them. I need to see it. Right now? I can't. <laughs> no. I need to see a picture later because I want to see it in all of its glory before you try to get it removed. So it says Fantasia on it. Mm-hmm. And it has two bullet holes. And two bullet holes. <laughs> I mean, Eric Northman was hot, and I just supported okay, everything. He I did. underestimated the levels to which you would go for your vampire obsession. So, thank you. Is that where you wanted him to bite you in the hip? No, actually, I saw That's this. Hot. I actually already saw this tattoo on Pinterest. Oh, so somebody, somebody else, else got already it. had this tattoo, and I thought that is adorable. I want it, and this guy made it six times like larger. Than <laughs> What it was no. to be. And me being 18, I did not. You, you trust your tattoo artist. <laughs> that is amazing. Don't, ta- don't trust your tattoo artist fully. No. <laughs> did your boyfriend at the time think it was weird? No. <laughs> he didn't he care. Was, he, mm, no. I'm trying to find a picture of it <laughs> like this. Yep. Yep. Oh my gosh. It kind of does look like bullet holes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll show the camera. Fantasia. <laughs> we will also put it on our story for people Thank you. who aren't watching on the YouTube. Thank you. If I you like- can actually send us a picture of your tattoo, though, that'd I be might even have better. Scrubbed it from all of my history, so we'll find. We'll see. <laughs> that is amazing. So when you got it at first, were you like happy with it, or were you like immediately upset? I think it was the euphoria of getting your first tattoo and also getting it at one of the most painful places mm-hmm. on your body. And being like, I didn't cry. I didn't stop. I'm amazing. And then like a year later, I was like, what did I do? Oh, no. <laughs> your frontal <laughs> your frontal lobe and your brain finally caught up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You, is it like, I have to ask, what did your husband say when he first saw this tattoo? Uh, he honestly didn't care <laughs> he was just like he was just happy to he, see me <laughs> so you know <laughs> men don't care <laughs> that is true oh my gosh that, i did not know that i learned something new every day you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> so um next i want to talk about 50 shades of gray as you should because twilight or i'm sorry 50 shades of gray is somewhat based off Twilight. Who Complete here? fan fiction, yes. Mm-hmm. Who here has seen Fifty Shades of Grey? I am raising my hand, yes. I have, have you? seen the first and second movie. I've okay, s- so you have. I've yes. seen them all I and read not. them all. It, you read them. I did. Are they very um, dirty? Yes. I, oh. Okay, this is just a, a tangent that has scarred me from these movies. So, like, I watched them... Because I was curious about what all the hype was about. Mm-hmm. And I heard it was based off Twilight. So I'm the first one. Little weird. Had to fast forward through most of it because of the boobs and the butt. But second movie. This man gives her this toy. And it's like a chain with two balls. Benoit. Like, yeah. It's called Benoit. I'm ben- never- Benoit beads. Yeah. Okay, Benoit you, beads have I, scarred me. There. I worked at Lover's Lane. I know that everything. Is true. You did? Yeah, she did. worked at a sex store. I forgot. <laughs> Wait, why are we talking about vampires when you worked at a sex store? I'm, yeah. I am so much more interested in that. <laughs> I'll come back and right talk after, about that. Right after we're done filming the Twilight episode, we'll film a sex store episode. Okay, but no, Benoit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Explain to Maddie what it is, because you probably, with your education. (laughs) Benoit beads can either be, like, put together, like, Mm -hmm. on a string, Mm -hmm. or individual balls themselves. Okay. And you put them inside the vaginal canal. Okay. And essentially, it helps tighten your... um, Muscles? Your muscles to keep them inside of you. Oh. So it's like an exercise. Kind of, yeah. So it's not like it d- d- doesn't feel good. It can, depending. On it just it it just it, where your mind is at. It disturbed me because she'd like walk and be like, "Ooh, do you like pull them out?" <laughs> I, I mean, don't know. Eventually, I yeah. Experienced them myself. <laughs> eventually, they'll I'm either come out some... themselves or you get them out. <laughs> you poop them out. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Do you put them in your butt? Do not do that. No. <laughs> Did somebody do that? What I learned when I was training. This was your training video. <laughs> do not put anything up your rectum that does not have a way to get it out or it will not come out and you have to go to the vet the er I must the vet. Vet. <laughs> because you are a sorry i was animal. <laughs> looking at vets earlier for my dogs oh my you have to go to the er or your doctor because <laughs> your canal your anal canal is nothing but muscles that tighten and constrict so it will literally just take it back up inside I just... what if there's poop that has to come out and then you push to go poop it's all coming out. I don't, know. I don't. I don't think she knows about that. what happens when you poop. I mean, I teach kids. I know how poop comes out. Oh my wait, gosh! Wait. When you were working at Lovers Lane, were there any vampire fanatics that would come in that you knew of? Yeah. What would they ask for? Um, was there like, anything like dark, sexual, like BD? What's it called? BDSM. BDSM. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially now Fifty Shades has its own line, so nobody what? cares about Twilight anymore. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah. You're so, welcome. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Twilight's a fan, or Fifty Shades is a fan fiction of Twilight. The main characters are supposed to be Edward and Bella. Yeah, if you really stop and think about it the, from the mm-hmm. first Twilight and the first Fifty Shades, you really can pick it apart. It's yeah, well, they identical. said that both Bella and Anna are clumsy and question what their male counterpart sees in them. They're meek and mild mm-hmm. and don't think they're attractive. One is rich and young and gorgeous. And- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I guess like Fifty Shades was based off Twilight, so that's just another thing. And um, I, ta- I also looked up why twilight was like this weird turn on for people um especially for middle-aged moms i know yeah. that was weird yeah yeah so it says let me see here so it painted vampires as sex objects which in my mind it didn't do that once again i'm gonna stick with chivalry edward was so sweet to Bella in Eclipse and Breaking Dawn. Yeah, right. That, that's that's what why I, liked. I loved him. I know. I, I like. wanted to hop on his back and hold and on to Spider Monkey. Of course, <laughs> right. So yeah, it was kind of like that, but it did experience that BDSM because when Bella and Edward did get physical, same with Vampire Diaries. There, was oh, that a, was nice. Yeah, <laughs> there was like an element of danger, and that's kind of what. Because he's so girl. He strong. broke the entire bed. I know. The, the Twice. I didn't know what to do with that when I was like 13 <laughs> watching that. <laughs> I had to that. go see it with my mom and I was just like. I feel like I saw it with my mom too. Mm-hmm. Oh no. I went to the midnight screening of it. When you were 12? Oh, I was way older. No, because the, Breaking, 13, Dawn, was 15, Breaking Dawn Part 2 came out in like 2012. Was that when he broke the bed? Mm-hmm. That was the second no. one. Yeah. So, so oh. 2011 would be okay. Breaking Dawn Part 1 then. Yeah. So you were older. All right. Yeah, I was out of high school. Oh. When did you graduate? 11. Wow. And you were you were excited to see Edward breaking the bed? Uh, finally, because you read about it. Yeah. But they didn't really do justice to like their second and third round, man. No. They, they could have done what, <laughs> what happened. <laughs> so, so he refuses to touch her. After he almost kills her, and then he never almost killed her. He's dramatic. Yeah, he was a little dramatic. The second time, she like had a dream that he did her. Then she woke up and she was very upset. And then he did it with her again, but it was like a little more sweet that time, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Yes, he was. He did it again out of pity. (laughs) And then. The third time, she was just kind of like, do you want to? And he carried her to the bedroom really fast, and that was it. I just, like the hustle. I remember in the movies wondering why she was, like, so surprised that she was pregnant. Well, because he's dead. Yeah. I, What's I, alive down there? Which is also <laughs> well, the is talk of how that's... anything came alive down there. Well, it doesn't make any sense from the get-go because he doesn't have blood to get down there. Mm-hmm. So what is in it? Venom. Maybe he's like that one guest we had. 
that was a bionic. bionic. He has a bionic penis and he pumps it up. <laughs> no, Stephanie Myers did address this. It was venom. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah. So venom instead of blood. She knows. Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed. Interesting. So yeah, Twilight was a lot of things. It helped young girls experience their BDSM side <laughs> a little bit. Sexual <laughs> awakening. I never did that for me. I just was like, oh, he's so sweet. That's what I, I, I love the pro- his being protective. I love the sweetness, mm-hmm. the chivalrous, how like... Even though, like, now I can see kind of red flags, but at the time I'm like, she is his world and I want that, which I. You got I it. I got that. You got that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we. I think it was just, a, it meant a lot for a lot of people. And like I said, it was a way to escape reality, way to get turned on in class. <laughs> yeah. I in don't know class. what's going on with you in high school, <laughs> Becca. <laughs> no, I just remember reading it and being really embarrassed of reading Breaking Dawn in school. When that part would come, I'd like hide the pages because I didn't want oh. like, a guy to look over and see what I was reading. <laughs> I think they know you're reading Breaking Dawn. That thing was thick. <laughs> well, I didn't want them to know I was reading about wasn't, sexy time. Wasn't every other girl <laughs> reading that? Yeah. I don't know. Cause Did I, your dad know that you were reading that? Yeah, because my mom. <gasps> no, listen to this. My mom pre-read the books before I could. And she loved it. And then she let me read them. And then she made your dad dress up as Edward. <laughs> okay, but this is the most important part. My dad loves Twilight. As he should. My he, husband loves Twilight. There have been so many times when I lived with him, his favorite's Eclipse. But mm. yeah, I I don't know. But <laughs> there were so many times when I'd walk downstairs and he was watching Twilight by himself. He loves Twilight. That's a good man. Mm-hmm. That's adorable. Brandon, my husband, has never seen them. Mm. And so yeah, that kind of brings him down a couple scores. Joey's tried to tell him multiple times to watch it. I know. Maybe we can get Joey over here. Oh, he'll come over. Watch yeah. it. He'll yeah. watch it again. He like <laughs> watching the end fight scene for him was like a revolutionary thing. I know. He freaked out. I'm also just thinking back when I was watching it recently. How did Bella just suddenly appear in Italy? Wasn't it Italy? So in the book, it's more detailed. Very. Um. So essentially, Alice has the vision that Edward's going to kill himself, right? Mm-hmm. So they immediately drive to Seattle because that's the nearest airport. Mm-hmm. And then they fly to to somewhere near Italy and then she steals a Porsche and drives to Volterra. Yes. Right? Yes, cuz Edward is in Rio and it's middle of the night so he has to wait till morning to get a plane. Mm-hmm. But obviously time differences, they drive to Seattle and she obviously can see the future so she sees it ahead of time. Um and that's how they can she can kind of coordinate with what time Bella will get there. Yeah, <sighs> so she could like theoretically see which flight is any get her there the fastest is like Alice is a lot better in the books. Oh. And like she would play out every possible scenario and try to see the future on it before she would actually act. Okay. Which also never always worked because the future changes. Mm-hmm. So all right. Thank you for yep. that info. You're welcome. Yes. So yeah, that's just kind of our quick little input on Twilight for people that are interested in Twilight, I have to ask both these ladies, which colon is your favorite or which one do you identify with the most? I mean, obviously Edward is my and Bella, yeah, favorite. Edward. Bella doesn't count. Okay, so Edward's everybody's favorite. I would date Edward. Which, which colon are you, though? So you have Alice, who's spunky, outgoing, sweet. Rosalie, who's just kind of standoffish and a little evil. Emmett, the dumb brute. Um... Jasper, the intense one. Edward, the what would you? How would you describe Edward? Hot, Edward? hot, but um, also like mysterious, mysterious and troubled and mm-hmm. sweet. And Carlisle has the best heart. I love Carlisle. And then Esme just wants to be a mama. You forgot one. Rigatoni. Oh, Renesme. Renesme doesn't Resume. count. Rigatoni. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. That's her. a horrible name. I, it is a horrible name. Yeah. Um could have went with Carly, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I think I would identify maybe with Rosalie, the evil one. <laughs> no, not really. no, not really. I don't know, because I'm not really as outgoing and spunky as Alice. 
So I'd be like a, a hybrid of the two of them, maybe. I don't I'll know. I'll say Alice. She I seems know. nice. I want to say Alice, but I mean, that's so I also basic. like Emmett because he's kind of stupid. I think that's more me. I'm a little stupid. I'm smart when I need to be. I don't have the strength thing going or the athleticism going for me, but I have those two things. Do you, you have the muscle? Do you know of why course. Rosalie <laughs> got with Emmett? Because of his muscles. No. No, because he looked like her friend's baby. Yes. He was What? He mm-hmm. was mauled by a bear and was dying in the woods when she found him. And she thought his dark, curly hair and his like his eyes and skin looked just like her friend's baby. And she's like, I have to save him. And then make out with him. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I gotta weird. save him, then make out with him, and yeah. <sighs> Somebody needs this... to investigate that. <laughs> oh, I mean, no, no. We all need to investigate Stephanie Meyer. She she makes choices that are not great. Well, like, I mean, think about Renesme as a baby is already like spoken had, for. Spoken for, like by Jacob. Like the imprints on an infant. Why did we allow that to get traction? I don't know. I, don't worry. I don't think anybody was necessarily happy for it. I felt like she got lazy and she was just like, we need to give jacob a happy ending and bella passing on her love of jacob through renesme was a way to get bella and jacob kind of together for the jake team jacob people i mean there's i heard it was because like she so originally twilight was there was only two books there was she did not think of it was going to be that big and it was only going to be two so she already wrote everything if you find it originally if I remember correctly, Twilight is technically fan fiction of Harry Potter. What? Yes, Interesting. If I remember correctly. Very loosely based. Um, but yes. And so she had she only wrote two books. And you can still find these two, I think. And she had to make up a reason why for the imprinting. And so she randomly made that up. And it was not very thought out. But I mean, a lot of people are grossed out by her choices for the fact that like, sure, Edward is a like 17, but he's still like over 100 years old and gets with a 16 year old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole thing with Jacob and Renesme, And then in another one of her books, same thing. The girl is like it's the host. The girl is like 16 and the guy she starts dating is like mid 20s. Hmm. It's, but that's what teenage girls want to be with an older I mean, man. I guess facts, but also don't don't, don't encourage, encourage it, guys. <laughs> don't don't do it. it. Yeah. Do it. Well, well, can we talk about really quick how badly um, that baby was animated in the movies? Did you uh, not see the original baby? The Chung original Esme? was like a, a actual baby doll, and it's really gross. Yeah. I think I've seen that. It yeah. is like disgusting, and it haunts. I guess the Forks Museum up in. Washington, yeah, you can go see it, and it's disgusting. I want to go to Forks so bad. We need to I do a girls' went. trip. I know Lindsay almost went, but the guy that played Charlie, what's his name again? Billy Burke. He was going to be there, and then he dropped out. And then guess who decided to be there? Carlisle. Carlisle. Mm. I missed it. Yeah. Aww. Let's talk about these daddies, Carlisle and Charlie. And I guess technically, I Edward like Carlisle. <laughs> uh, and Edward's a daddy. And Edward's a daddy. <laughs> uh we need to i'm a head out <laughs> yeah especially in the new book coming out i guess they're all gonna be in high school together yeah. and that's weird yeah in the, in the new book they're are they back in forks no they're up in canada somewhere up, i think okay um yeah so edward bella jacob and all the collins and renesme are all in high school together isn't that weird? Did the original author write this? Yes, this is a continuation. Sometimes and I guess, you just need to know when to stop. Well, we just we want mm-hmm. all the books in Edward's perspective. Now we don't care about anything else. Just put mm-hmm. everything in Edward's perspective. Like she's like, no, no, but I'll give you this. Yeah, nobody asked for this. Nobody cares. But I guess mm-hmm. it also focuses around Jessica Stanley. If you remember Anna Kendrick's character. Oh yes, her daughter. Nobody gives a which flying I don't doodle. I know. It's it's bizarre, but I'm like, if Renesmee is going to high school th- for the first time, wouldn't that make her six years old? Six or seven? Like, in human years? Maybe. 
Yeah. I don't So know. how does Jessica have a teenage daughter that can relate? I think maybe it might have been actually a few more years later. And oh. Then Jacob stops aging when his whoever when he's he a wolf. prints on this ages. This is so weird. So. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Twilight. In conclusion. Wow. <laughs> Twilight is weird. But. We stand it. Listen, we know. I do stand it. Actually, <laughs> we know it's terrible. The writing is terrible. It's the really movies bad. are awful, but they're so good. There's they're just this, so bad, but they're so good. There's the, there's this spice you can't put your finger on mm-hmm. that it's addicting. Yeah, and I don't know. I think it just was such a big part of all of our lives as young children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think that. Um, Vampire Diaries I was a fan of until Elena left the show. And Wait, they kept the show going after she left? Yeah, they left they kept it going for two or three more seasons. I didn't know that. I never yeah. watched it. I never finished mm. it. I loved Stefan Salvatore. He was so delish. <laughs> Which one was that one? He's he, the handsome one. Yeah, I'll show I mean, you. Technically they're both supposed to be handsome. I so. don't think the one with darker hair is that hot, but that's Ian, Ian Summerholder. Summerholder. So that's not the guy that plays Stefan. Paul Wesley plays oh, Stefan. Paul Wesley. Okay. Yep. So I'll show you a picture of him now. and I'll put him on the stories because I could bless everyone with that. Um, he was delish. He was kind of, he reminded me of Edward. He's mm-hmm. very, very sweet, very chivalrous. Yes, I can see it. And so, yeah. And then Ian was the bad boy. He played this self destructive jerkwad that you still. She still wanted to be with over Paul Wesley, but whatever. Because she could change him. Mm. That's a problem with people. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. You anyway. can't change a vampire. Anyway. Can I can change you. <laughs> you can be changed. <laughs> <laughs> Any Anyone that had to live through Twilight, I think, is a better person for it. Because like Lindsay said, they were so bad, but so good. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so... I mean, it just, it was a very great time to grow up. Yes. Uh, yes. So, yeah, I'm going to, we never did our obsessions, Maddie. Oh, so maybe I'm we sorry. should do that. We're a little rusty. Life has been a little bit nuts. Yes, it has been. And usually we ask how things are going. We didn't do that either. Well, things are not going well. My <laughs> dog just died. I got T boned. It's like as soon as summer left, you know, shit hit the fan. It did. And seasonal depression's coming. Yes, but Becca and I are, st- we st- want to do one episode for November, one episode for December, maybe more, but probably not. And then we have, we're going to get revamped for the new year. Yes. Yeah. We're going to, a part of our problem was with everything crazy going on. We weren't, we like to be two to three episodes ahead just in case something like a pet passing away happens or anything. We just didn't get to it. Um, We are going to start putting out new ideas in our stories. So keep looking at that. Um, I meant to do that last week, but I never did. That's okay. I'll do it. It it will happen eventually. Um, (laughs) What's your obsession? My obsession is uh, Lore Olympus. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. For people that don't know what this is, it's on Webtoons. It is a comic about um, Hades and Persephone. I can never say her name. Persephone. So, I mean, everyone knows Hades from Hercules. But in this one, it paints him kind of in a different light. It's loosely based off Greek mythology. Yeah, Greek mythology. Just not as accurate. Because if it was, it'd be a little incesty. A little bit, yeah. But (laughs) it's, it's really, really good. It's not something I ever thought I'd be into. But I was scrolling through Facebook one day, clicked on it, was hooked. Then they came out with the actual book. So I went and I bought it and I read the whole thing in one day. So, yeah. You are obsessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an easy read, too. It is. It's not like, by by the way, it's like 40 cartoons, maybe. And it maybe took like an hour to two hours, I would say. For the comic. Yeah, for the comic. Yeah, for the book. But, I mean, there's like 180 episodes and one book only covers like 40. So, Mm -hmm. Maddie looks confused. I'll show you the cover of it, just so you can at least semi know what we're talking about. So, yeah, that's my obsession. All right. And then I got this really cool lipstick that looks like pills. 
So I'll put that in the stories. It's cool. really cool. Pills. Pills. I'll show it to you. All right. It's really neat. That sounds cute. Mm-hmm. It is. Okay. Lindsay, what's your obsession? Uh, vacation. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're getting ready to go to Bahamas. Disney, Bahamas. And we decided very last minute to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So. <gasps> what? Yes. Oh it's going to be a long gosh, I'm trip. I'm so jealous. You're going to see. I'm going to make a light Ride saber. Hagrid's ride for me. I will. I'm gonna that sounds times. wrong. <laughs> ride that Hagrid ride. Didn't you say that before and I thought the exact same ride thing? Ha- ride, Hag- <laughs> ride, ride Hagrid. Ride Hagrid. <laughs> ride Hagrid's wand for me. S- save a horse, ride a cowboy. Ride a Hagrid. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, he's too big. <laughs> 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 like You're done. <laughs> You're done. Oh, You're done. Tall and big. Immediately, no. <laughs> I mean, his girlfriend was bigger, though. People are gonna think I'm like a sexual <laughs> predator after this. You episode. really are. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. <laughs> so after just ride Hagrid five times more. <laughs> <laughs> It's a motorcycle ride. I, just I wish the- I knew how to quit you, Becca. <laughs> but you love me. You do. <laughs> anyway. Uh-huh. What are you obsessed with? I am obsessed with... It is a Charlotte Tilbury dupe that... Tilbury, however you say it. It's... Don't look at my makeup right now, but it's an eye concealer and you just buy it in a darker shade than your skin and you use it as contour interesting it's a cream contour but it's actually an eye concealer from revolution makeup so you can mm, get it at I ulta love revolution makeup yeah i had, didn't really have any revolution makeup before this but i think i'm a convert because i really like it and it's mm-hmm. like eight dollars yeah they're wow. cheap and they're yeah. really good i like their packaging too but it's the revolution eye concealer and then i just got it in a darker shade and you contour your forehead your cheekbone and then your jawline and I just really like the way it sits on my face. Well, that's cool. I would never think to use the eye cream as or the yeah, under never. eye stuff. Well, I wouldn't either, but this girl came into the coffee shop with beautiful contour, and I'm like, what are you using? Because it looked so good. And she's like, I saw it on TikTok, and it's a Charlotte Tilbury dupe from Ulta or Target. And Interesting. It's, it's Thank so cheap. God for TikTok. Yes, TikTok is saving lives. I love it. <laughs> Well, do you want to read our misconnection? Yes. Or maybe Lindsay should do the on- yes. honors. Oh, since I have such experience. <laughs> you both are the readers here. Yes. I'm a watcher. You're a voyeur. What's that? A watcher. A voyeur? Voyeurism. It means you like watching. I've never heard that word. You're yeah. so you knowledgeable. <laughs> She's a smarty. That's what you get for being the oldest in the room. <laughs> a voyeur. <laughs> All right. Make sure you do it in your sexiest voice. My sexy voice. There That's you go. LA Fitness Glendale. Wow. I haven't seen you in what seems like years. Love the long hair and your Birkenstocks. <laughs> seems like you stayed active during the pandemic. I'm giving more of a Joe vibe. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Actually, this sounds really good. But I'm glad that you don't wear a mask in the gym. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kudos for wiping down your equipment before and after use. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to talk with you soon. <laughs> wow. Isn't that interesting? If that's you in LA Fitness in Glendale, someone really wants you. I thought that your voice was mm-hmm. perfect. Maybe it, you should consider uh, switching careers. I have actually honestly really thought about reading, like, like making, like, Audible stuff. Audible smut books. You should. I, I, I mean, not me personally making them, but reading, reading them. for yeah. audiobooks. Yeah. yeah. I, I bet love you, it. yeah, your voice is uh, calming. Soothing. Yeah. I really just don't want to pay for all the equipment. <laughs> well, you have this. Yes. You yes. Can you just can come can... over here. There you go. There we go. All right. Well, I'm going to lead us out. Okay. We love you. Yes. Mm-hmm. We will see you next time, bees. Thanks Bye-bye. to Lindsay. <laughs> Thanks to Lindsay. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> And that's it. All right. See you next time. Bye. Edward. <laughs> not not Jacob. Not Jacob. Um, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Basic Bee Podcast. Make sure to follow the Basic Bees on Instagram at Basic Bee Pod or watch the video podcast on YouTube. And always remember, live, laugh, love. <laughs>